Wow, stories. Am I the idiot for labeling my wife's tears as immature and subsequently being made to sleep on the living room floor? Recently, my wife asked to visit a temple and an open house on Saturday, and I agreed. However, I was running 15, 30 minutes late as I got ready. While I was in the bathroom, she began to cry and shout loudly. When I rushed out, I found her sobbing uncontrollably and sitting on the floor for support. She expressed her frustration about potentially missing the open house. Although we typically attend open houses every weekend and can often visit on Sundays if we miss one on Saturday, I responded to her distress by saying, I am ready and I was already hurrying up in the bathroom. You have grown up. Even now, why are you crying like a child for something so small as that? Even if we can't make it to the open house today because it gets closed, it will still be open tomorrow and we can go. You are 32 years old and still you show childishness. Maybe you think it seems hot or something. After this, I got dressed and asked if we were still going. My wife angrily grabbed frozen chicken from the freezer, slammed it into the fridge and said, You're right. So this is your shelf in the refrigerator. This is your chicken. From now on, you'll cook for yourself and sleep in the hall. I'll lock the bedroom door. For the past five days, she has remained in the locked bedroom, leaving only for bathroom breaks and meals. We live in a one-bedroom apartment, so I've been forced to sleep on the carpeted living room floor. We don't have a bed or couch in the living room, and she is only cooking for herself, so I've been eating out or cooking on my own. On the first night, I knocked on the locked bedroom door, asking for my pillow so I could sleep in the living room. She replied, Fuck yourself. I asked again for the pillow and she said, Fuck yourself. Frick yourself outside. You're saying I'm 32 years old and not sexy anymore. Your face is as dark as your asshole. Note that I never said you are 32 years and not sexy anymore. I only said 32 years and acting childish. Maybe you think it is hot or something. We are both Asian Indian with brown skin, but my complexion is darker than hers, so her comment felt offensive. I chose not to respond to avoid escalating the situation, as she might have started screaming and disturbing our neighbors. Instead, I slept on a bedsheet on the floor, using a blanket as a pillow. Not the idiot. Your wife, who is 32 years old, acted unbelievably childishly to possibly being late for an open house and those here claiming that you're the idiot, seems to be reacting just as childishly. Sorry you have to put up with that nonsense, and the wrong person is sleeping on the floor in your home. Toddlers should be on the floor, not grown-ups. Everyone sucks here. I'd be leaning more towards NNTA if not for the maybe you think it's hot comment, low blow and almost certainly not the truth. Sounds like you said it just to be accusatory. Regardless, Sobbing on the floor because you're 15 minutes late to an open house when you go to these things weekly. Honestly, I don't know if I'd handle that well either. Am I the idiot? I, 32F, want my friend, 27M, to break up with his fiance, 27F. I, female 32, have a friend Carl, male 27, who's engaged to Cora, 27F. Carl is part of the group I play D&D with. He's been dating Cora for 10 years. I'll say up front, I don't like Cora. She is stuck up and looks down on us nerds. I have tried to be friendly and get to know her, but she just ignores me and stays glued to her phone or talks only to Carl. Carl says she is shy but really great once you get to know her. To spare his feelings, I never told him I don't like Cora. I didn't think my opinion mattered. I see her rarely anyway. Our group plays once a week. This is the only time Carl does anything on his own. He used to play with another group but quit to have more time with Cora. Last year, she started complaining about him going out to play instead of taking her on a date. We even moved the game from Friday to Wednesday, which was hard, because it sounded like she really wanted Fridays to be their special date night. Cora was happy for a few days, and then the following week she was complaining again about Carl going out. So the issue is not the day of the week, just that she doesn't want Carl to spend time with friends. This is when Carl started looking unhappy and saying things like he didn't see a future for them. I tried to stay neutral because I felt biased by my dislike of Cora, but secretly I was hoping they would break up. Then he stopped talking about ending their relationship, and shortly after they were engaged. He didn't complain about Cora wanting him not to go to DND night anymore. I thought they had talked it out and come to some agreement. 
However, shortly after, the problems returned. On x mass she gifted him dance lessons that were on the same day time as our games. Carl says she means well, and after they're married and start a family, he won't have any time for his hobbies. Carl skipped this week's session due to Cora again. I told Adam, mutual friend, I was done mincing words, and next time I see Carl I'm going to tell him I don't think Cora is right in trying to control all his time or his hobbies, and he should think whether he really wants to marry her. Adam didn't agree, said Cora might be jealous of me and it's a prick move to mess with someone else's relationship. Adam doesn't think Cora has reason to be jealous, just it's how she might see it. To be clear, I don't have any romantic attraction to Carl, and I'm already in a relationship with another man. Carl is a great person, but not my type. I just can't stand to see my friends so miserable, and I want a frank talk with him. I don't necessarily want them to break up, but I think the current situation is untenable for Carl. If the genders were swapped, and it was a big burly man trying to stop his petite girlfriend from having any outside interests and meeting with her friends, it would be a huge red flag. I think I'd be more of an idiot if I didn't say anything. You're the idiot. You said Carl said he doesn't see a future. He wants to end the relationship. Carl is a grown man. If he's unhappy and meant what he said, I would imagine he would have already done so. The truth is you don't know what goes on behind closed doors in someone else's relationship. It's fine to show concern for friends, but know your place and respect boundaries. You're the idiot. They've been together for 10 years, so they know their relationship better than you. Cora likely senses that you have a negative attitude towards their relationship and don't want her BF around someone who actively wants to tell him to dump her. Saying something to Carl will ensure that he stops coming to D&D &D altogether. Stay out of it.